So let's talk a few minutes about frame jigs. Usually when you're assembling frames, you're going to do a super at a time, 10 frames. So instead of um, doing them one at a time manually, you can buy or build a jig that will hold 10 frames so you can put them all together relatively quickly. Uh, you can buy a jig from some of the catalogs. You can find plans to build a jig uh, similar to this one on the internet. Um, you can see it's a little complicated to build. You gotta put little spacers in and stuff and then to use it you get these two boards that sit in there and those spacers like so and then your end bars all go in here and once you throw your end bars in there you got this spring-loaded plate that put on there and hold them in place and you can assemble them and then when you're done you got the whole thing comes apart to take the frames out and it's really complicated it's not the best design fortunately a member at B Master named Ross came up with a very simple yet very functional design um, simply a square box with holes cut in you put your frame end bars in here and these two pieces wedge them in build your frames, you just pull these bars out and your frames fall out. Uh, there's nothing really critical about the design. Uh, Ross has it on his website. I also did put a set of plans together that are available on my website for those that like to have measurements you know to build something instead of designing it themselves. Really if you if you make it five inches or less you can use the same jig uh, to build shallows, mediums, and deeps. Whereas the other design that I showed you previously with the plates and all that require different size plates and stuff to, 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 to really work for the different sizes. So this is, this is a much more simple but elegant design and uh, appreciate the design by Ross. So to start with, let's put these locking bars in place. And then what we're going to want to do is take our end bars and remember you're going to wire and you have the eyelets in the eyelets go to the outside so we'll put ten of these on each side okay once you get your end bars in we'll just square them up a little bit turn it over so you get the wider part to support on the bottom We'll install our bottom bars first. Take out our glue. A little dab of glue in each one. You know, the assembly line approach here, doing 10 at a time, uh, saves you some time and effort because you can go through and apply glue to all of them in a relatively short amount of time versus doing one at a time, setting the bottle down and, and such. Take our bottom bars, set them in. Once again, you get a, a rhythm going. You don't have to keep changing what you're doing. And finally, number 10. If you don't have an air stapler, you can go ahead and hand nail these at, at this time. The jig still helps you you know, be more efficient doing 10 at a time. But if you have an air gun, I use inch staples for the bottom bars. They're a little bit longer than the nails you would use if you're hand nailing, but with the air gun, it makes it go deeper and quicker and holds better. So we'll just... One staple in each bottom bar. Flip the jig around, do the other side, and there we have the bottom done, we can flip the jig over, and now we just apply the glue for the top bars. A little dab on each one, 
And here I'm using yellow wood glue. I know I said white glue in the previous segment, but it's really using the yellow wood glue. Uh, you can use the polyurethane glue, uh, especially if you've soaked your end bars in water. Uh, that helps the polyurethane glue harden that much quicker. Okay, then it's just a matter of putting your top bars into the frames. And finally, number 10. Once you get them all installed, I take and put inch and three-eighth staples in my air stapler. That's the biggest of my gun will hold. And then I just put a staple in each end. Jig around and do the other side. Okay, now that we have the top bars and the bottom bars stapled on, the last step is to put the ever important staple through the end bar into the top bar that helps when you pull the frames out and then from falling apart. So we'll just put one in the side of each frame. Flip it over. The other side. frames are all assembled, I would suggest letting them sit dry if you can. If you're doing a bunch of them, you can pull them out and do the next set. But if you're going to do 10 a night or whatever, just let them sit in the jig to dry. The jig helps them uh, stay square and, and, they'll, and they'll, they'll set up nice. So to remove them from the jig, just pull out these uh, wedge bars and give the jig a tap. And if you're like me and sloppy with the glue over time, you get glue residue built up in your jig, which makes removing the frames a little bit tougher, but nonetheless, it still works. And there you see our frames coming out. So here's our 10 frames we just assembled. Uh, you can see they're stapled. Get that ever important staple in the end bars. Uh, pretty strong, square. So next time, we'll talk about installing the wires into these frames before we add our foundation or starter strips.